everybody. I'm Representative Leslie Zepkis, and I'm sitting here with probate judge Matt Jalowick. Um, I'm excited to have him today. Uh, I represent Prospect Bethany in Cheshire, and um, Matt lives in Cheshire. So thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Leslie. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, you are our probate judge. I am for District 18, which consists of the towns of Cheshire and Southington. So it's uh, part of the state's larger system, and we've got about uh, a little over 75,000 folks, and we're one of the larger tiers in the state uh, between the two towns, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Good. Well, thank you. So a lot of people don't know a lot about probate or what that even means. Is it, you know, for kids, for elder, seniors, for uh, what? What is a probate judge? Well, that's the, that's the A number one common question because most folks are not familiar with the probate system at all and their first foray into it is when they're thrown in uh, in a haphazard circumstance. Someone fell ill, uh, they're dealing with uh, an elderly relative or a spouse, they're dealing with a sick child, uh, someone passes away and they're, they're they have a crash course in what probate actually is. So that's like the number one question that I receive all the time. Most folks' perception is it's uh, wills and estates when someone dies. Everyone has the uh, perception or the image of the, the court and the judge and the reading of the last will and testament uh, uh, before everyone. Traditionally, that is one of the main jurisdictions of probate. Essentially, the handling of a deceased person's assets and how they transition to the next of kin. That's the traditional form of probate. But our uh, powers are statutory, which encompass a lot more. Um, we handle affairs of the living as well, which most folks aren't aware. And you had mentioned children and so forth and so on. Essentially, um, we handle everything from what you may hear of the terms of conservatorship. We handle guardianship. We handle uh, termination of parental rights, the removal of guardians, which all involve minors. We do adoptions, uh, we do sterilizations, which is a scary thing. Um, we do civil commitments uh, to psychiatric facilities for folks with uh, cognitive impairments. Um, we handle a lot of different things and the traditional trust and estates things. Most of your uh, perceived antiquated stuff, wills and trusts, still uh, amount to most of the bulk of the work. So there's probably about 60 to 70 percent uh, paperwork wise where folks have passed away and we're handling their affairs after they're gone. But probably 90 percent of the matters that I am involved in actively are with living people. Um, and that's what really is the unique and, and most challenging aspect of the job. So, um, Judge, what is the difference between, you know, you and other judges? You know, um, you mentioned so many things, and in my mind, I think some of those, oh, I thought this fell under this yeah. kind of branch. So, what's the difference? Well, you have to, this is a history lesson, you have to look at really why we have probate courts and why do you have the probate judge and why do you elect the probate judge. That's usually one of the successive questions. And you have to look back at when we were the 13 colonies and what type of legal system we had back then. You had your local folks in town and um, they basically would send someone up to Hartford or up to the Charter Oak and that would be your, your delegate from your local town. Well, those people would come back and they would make the laws and they would also enforce the laws and they would interpret the laws. So you kind of had a jack of all trades. So you as, you as someone up at the Capitol would be, you know, proposing laws, making laws, and then you would be the one adjudicating those laws. Well, it was quick to find out that most folks thought that was probably not the best idea. So uh, as the country formulated and the states became you know ratified and, and created their own constitutions they said well let's let's figure out how better to do it and they had your legislators and your representatives make the laws they then established courts per se to interpret those laws and in part of that bargaining they said well the powers that be up at the capitol um, through the legislature will determine the superior court judges and they will put them in brick and mortar buildings and they will give them specific jobs. And that is what is generally considered a court of equity. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Your localized family matters, your dowries, your community-based issues, which have developed into modern day probate, the folks that be decided to leave it to the people. And they said, those matters are better addressed by the folks in the community. So Mr. and Mrs. Jones in town who had an issue with a child uh, would see the judge in their town as opposed to someone that was dealing um, in superior court. 
And that was solidified and ingrained in the state constitution. So that's why today your governor appoints your superior court judges. Yes. And the people select their probate judge. And that is why you have to elect your probate judge. So, um, Judge, you mentioned community, yep. and we're here today at the Senior Center in Cheshire, uh, which is a great community cornerstone, yep. um, and I know that you come here often. I and, do. Uh, I, you do. This must be your office outside of your office. <laughs> well, I, I don't have a parking space, but I am here quite frequently. I, I would say that. Um, I'm hoping to have a mug in the cafeteria with my name on it at some point in time. Um, I do come to the Senior Center a lot, and uh, it kind of relates directly back to your question earlier on the differences between superior court and probate court in the whole system. Superior court I refer to as brick and mortar, meaning if you have a matter there, you are there. You have to go there as a litigant. The court doesn't come to you. Probate court, probate court is wherever I go. So I'll often say have gavel will travel. So if you're if you're if you're homebound, okay, because you have mobility issues, I come out to you. If you're in the hospital, if you're in Gaylord in rehab or in Waterbury for rehab, I come out to you. So I spend a lot of time out in the community. One of the uh, things that I do is come to the senior center here. I go to the library in Southington, and I basically try to provide all of this type of information to the community before they might need the services. So I have a monthly chat. I come at the end of the month here on Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, and I go to the library in Southington on the last Friday of every month. And it originated from when I started eight years ago, I would go and I'd try to do a presentation. Because the more I can educate the public, the easier it actually makes my job. Um, the folks have at least met me, they understand some of the basic parameters of the system, so that should something happen to them, and, and the folks that attend are usually concerned about that, that's why they're, they're coming, um, they have an introduction to it. So if I can at least ensure a little bit of comfort in what they may encounter, it often makes the situation a little bit easier for them, which in turn makes it easier for my staff and, and, and me. So I come out and uh, I would do a ABC presentation. Well, after an hour, I would then spend another hour and a half of folks raising their hands with questions. So now I come with a cup of coffee, and it's usually on a rainy day like today, and we'll sit around, and it could be half a dozen folks, it could be two dozen folks, and we just round robin, and I, I can't give specific legal advice. But what I do is I explain the parameters of the law, the statute, and the framework in which they would be working, and I try to give them as much direction as I can. That's wonderful. I've learned so much that I didn't know about a probate judge. You have to come to one of our and monthly things. I would love that. And, and honestly, the best thing that I heard was have Gavel will travel. Yes. I think that that's wonderful. <laughs> and being so accessible to people in the community because you're afraid of judges. I don't ever want to go in front of a judge. So exactly. I think that that's great that you're able to share that and how a probate judge is different from Thank you. other judges. So um, that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. Sure. What are your hobbies? What do what you like to do? What are my hobbies? Well, uh, I have three children, and as you know, uh, they're involved in baseball, softball, basketball, uh, martial arts, Irish dance. I really don't have a lot of free time, <laughs> but uh, I'm a big history buff, uh, which also parlay is working great with uh, the elder folks in our community, so oftentimes they'll have a lot of chats about World War II history and things like that, so I'm a big uh, World War II history buff. Um, I love antique cars. That's always a big thing. Um, aside from that, uh, caring for the family, spending time with them, doing different things. Uh, being involved in the community. I really don't have a lot of free time. I'm, I try to be uh, as diverse as possible, let's put it that way. And it seems like you're always, oh, so no matter where you go, whether it's with your kids or you can or have gavel or travel, but if someone, you know, approaches you. Everyone always has a question, yes. like a, yes. like a yes. typical cocktail party. Yes. I just yes. have a question. It's not a legal question, but I have a question. <laughs> of course it's a legal <laughs> question, otherwise you wouldn't be asking right. me. That's but uh, yeah, so I am on all the time. So Wonderful. thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. It My pleasure. It's a pleasure having you, and thank you for educating me and everyone as well. Thank um, you. About this. Appreciate the invitation. Thank you.